thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today is reading in the book of Job, Job chapter 31. Right in the beginning in verse 1, Job spoke, speaks about how he would not look at a woman lustfully, that he made a covenant with his eyes. And, and it's in the midst of his painful suffering that he said this. And it kind of reminds me of what happened a couple of years ago when COVID first came around the world and locked everybody up in their houses. Christian theologians that I listen to say that's when pornography on the internet started to spike big time. People were lonely, they were depressed, they were anxious about their health, their future, their jobs, locked up in their houses. And if you do not run to God, you will run to the arms of a woman or a man, maybe literally or figuratively. It is when we're suffering in life sometimes that people try to find a uh, right relationship with women or men that they think is right, but it's not right. Oftentimes they will look at a woman or a man wrong and with the uh, internet and the cell phones in our hands, we can look at a lot of things on there that are really, really bad. It is actually a pandemic pornography on the internet. It's plaguing a lot of people in our society, even in the churches. A lot of times when we're suffering, that's what we look for, gratification from another person. I am no exception to the rule. I remember the story that Christ gave in John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11, of a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. People wanted to stone her right away. And Christ said in John chapter 8, verse 7, he without sin cast the first stone. That is why I'm quite oftentimes very reluctant, very quick to not judge what other people struggle with, whether it's sexually or whatever. Um, it might be in their lives because I have to look at the beam in my own eye. I am, no, I am not innocent in my own life either about the struggles of sexual immorality. 1987, when I was 21 years old, I was working at a medical center. And I remember, sadly, about 35 years ago, getting involved with a woman at my job twice my age. She was 42. And it was at a painful time in my life, like Job. My friend who brought me to Christ had just died of the AIDS virus. My mother and my father were heading to divorce. And when you're struggling and suffering in life, this is what happens if we don't keep our eyes on the prize, if we're not strong in the Lord, keeping our faith in God and serving him, we could fall into these sins. And I did myself too. Lady came into my room where I worked as a medical a medical center, as an x-ray clerk. She was an assistant administrator, being harassed by her ex-boyfriend, looking out the window in my room to see if he was outside. And she was a very attractive woman. She was well built for her age. And I started to look with my eyes. And this is where the problem starts. See, this is why we have to guard our hearts. We're told in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. The scriptures tell us in Psalm 101, verse, verse 3, not to look at anything that is vile. We're told in the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. And oftentimes we think of adultery as the physical act, and that's true. But Christ tells us, our Lord and Savior, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 and 28, not to look at a woman lustfully. That's adultery itself. Because it's often the look... It's often the desires and the heart that get us in trouble in the beginning anyway. James chapter 1, you can read in verses 14 to 16. We are not to deceive ourselves. Sin starts with the look, a desire. And it takes, and it just cascades like a, like a snowball effect. You know, I often tell you that avalanches start with a little ripple of snow, a little patch of snow falling down a mountain, and it just cascades into an avalanche. The same thing with a tsunami. Tsunamis crash along the shores of a country or a land and destroy so many people's lives. It starts as a little ripple in an ocean from an underground earthquake at times and just cascades and cascades and builds and builds until it becomes a tsunami. That's how sin is, my friends. It starts, especially sexual sins, it starts with a little look. We often remember the story of King David, and we could all learn a lesson from that. David fell into his relationship with Bathsheba, 2 Samuel chapter 11, by gazing on a woman by the name of Bathsheba, bathing herself in, in her uh, birthday suit on the top of the temple. But it was his fault. He kept looking at her. 
You have to turn off the switch, my friends. It starts with the heart. That Job, in his midst of his suffering, said he made a covenant with his eyes not to the look at a woman lustfully. My friends, in the day and age we're living in today, where there's so much sexual immorality, first and foremost, as I said before, let us not be so quick to judge others simply because they sin differently than us. But that doesn't mean we don't judge. We ought to judge with a righteous judgment. Christ said that in John chapter 7, verse 24. But the righteous judgment is according to God's word. Not our self-righteousness, not our pride, not who we are looking down at others, as I said before, simply because they sin differently than us. Early in my Christian walk, I often look down a lot at the homosexual movement. And yet, despite the fact that I never struggled with that sin, I sinned fornicating. And so basically, James chapter 2, verse 10 says, if we sit, break one letter of the law, we're guilty of them all. We're all in the same boat without Christ. But it doesn't excuse the fact that we're living in a culture of deep sexual uh, immorality. We're degenerating into a moral abyss in our country, in America, uh, with these movements in the last few years, with the, with the gay marriage movement, which completely goes against God's word. It is an abomination in God's eyes, according to the scriptures. Now with this transgendering of children, mutilating children to tell them that they could do whatever they want to do with their bodies. I'm often reminded of what Christ said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. If anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it is better for a millstone to be cast around their neck and to be thrown into the sea. And that could go for individuals, that could go for government officials, and that could go for a country and a society. That's why I believe America is one of the reasons why America is heading down an abyss is because it's forgetting God. Psalm 9 verse 17 tells us that the nation that forgets God basically goes to hell. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 tells us that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is its downfall. My friends, as Christians, let us guard our hearts. Proverbs 4.23 tells us that. Christ tells us in Luke chapter 6 verse 45, whatever good we do in our lives, it's coming from our heart. Whatever bad and evil we do, it comes from the heart. We have to guard our hearts. And the only way we do that is through Christ and Him alone. Standing firm in our faith. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 tells us. Standing firm in our faith. Not the faith that we have in ourselves, but faith in God through Christ. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, when we've been guilty of sexual immorality. As 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13 tells us, our bodies were not for sexual immorality, but for you, O Lord God. Help us to flee from these sins. As 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 and 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 tell us, flee from these sins in love and obedience to Christ. In his name I pray. Take care. God bless you all.